Yes, yeah, I did. Anyway. And, oh, and you have a guest with you. Betsy Means. Oh, Betsy oh, Means. Oh, and Lord. And Margo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, they will be reading for Women's Month uh, from If Trees Could Talk. Yes. All right. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> by a falling widow maker, we pay taxes with no representation. Current law is an abomination of the rights of women. Oh, look, they're here. We will begin our meeting. The harvest dawn, dawn is, near. is near. The year's, the year's delay, delay is not long. long. And, and she, she who toils with many, many a tear, tear Shall, shall reap with many, many a, song. a song. Proceedings of the Women's Rights Convention guides us in this Declaration of Faith, which corresponds to the United States Declaration of Independence. Betsy will read what is presented to the New York Temperance Convention this year. Thank you. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, President of the Temperance Convention, and Lucretia Mott, President of the Women's Rights Convention, presented the 18 grievances of women, of which Elizabeth authored. There are a few grievances which I want to bring to your attention, as action will be taken statewide. Number four. Women are denied the first right of citizens of the elective franchise, thereby leaving her without representation in the halls of legislature. Women should have the right to vote. Number five, he has made her, in the lie of the law, if married, civilly dead. Number six, he has taken from her all rights of property, even the wages she earns. Number nine, after depriving her of all rights as a married woman, if single and the owner of property, he has taxed her to support a government which recognizes her only when her property can be made profitable to it. Thank you, Betsy. Now let's chart how we choose to support this result. Any questions? I have a question. Yes. Why were women dressed in formless short dresses at the convention? What would it look like women of a certain profession to wear the short dress? The silver gray dress symbolizes for a woman to stay in her cocoon until she feels the need for change. When she finds a necessity to act, she will not need rude remarks or harbor doubts. The ideal female form is not found in a whalebone bodice and bedraggled skirt. For a graceful demeanor, let's look at the ideal form from the old painters and sculptors. A light artistic taste of the human form is most beautiful when wholly draped and unadorned. Mrs. Bloomer of Oswego, New York, has designed a gray silk short dress with flowing trousers, a dress perfectly comfortable for any woman. Corsets and heavy drapery are quite too much for we, who wash, iron, brew, feed and carry children, <laughs> shovel potatoes and garden. I might as well work with a ball and chain. Oh. I have a question. What does Mrs. Bloomer's flat beaver hat symbolize? 
with a simplicity of manner, Mrs. Bloomer challenges us to have a habit of dressing that best fits our needs. There is a strong reason in favor of being laughed at. The more ridiculous comments we encounter, the better. It develops our character to stand alone. In that way, women define what women wear and how we live. If you are requesting us to change men's temperance laws by becoming a laughing stock, women have long been aware of the crushing weapon of what will people say. The statement impedes our impulses, resolve, and noble deeds of courage. Standing up to rude comments is just the start of us. Thank you.